got, yeah, I'm talking about you got to play with the coochie before you get up in it. You know what I'm talking about? I did a Q&A yesterday, and mm-hmm. they were like, is Louis Belt really funny? Mm-hmm. Oh, for real? <laughs> what? How did they ask that? They just asked on the question. On, oh, like, you could ask questions in the little square box. And they were like, square box? on my on my story. Oh, I did a questionnaire. Okay. Oh, and okay. they were asking me about you. <laughs> That's hella funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, was, yeah. yeah, he's really funny, y'all. <laughs> In real life. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, man. All right, let me see. I want to I wanna ask Christina this question. I don't know if I want to start it off like that. <laughs> mm. All right. Fuck it. I don't know what he's going to ask. I think I do, but I'm hoping it's not what I think. Let me screenshot He's going to try to ask you about that dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got to. You know what? Him. We going to start it off with nigga. that. Is he what? an athlete? What? No, I don't think You know how they fuck with it. The athletes for sure. No. They'll wipe somebody quick. Is no. he not a Reggie though? What's a Reggie? A Reggie's like a regular nigga. Like a mm. nigga that just There's, What's a regular nigga though? Right. A regular nigga that you know, he got a cool job. He 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 go to the like he might have a birthday with the homies, they piece up on a section. You know, like he Is be that on, a bad thing? He'd be on the sticks. <laughs> he'd be on the sticks. DJ Head, is that a bad thing? What, a Reggie? Yeah. No, it's just that women usually don't want Reggies, they want roosters, typically. And what's then, a rooster? West Coast. It's usually one rooster per hen house. Mmm. I know what you're talking about. West Coast. I'm from Colorado. Break it down for me, dude. You ever seen a hen house? No. You from Colorado. You for sure seen a hen house. No, I didn't grow up on that side of Colorado. Uh, mm. Okay, so um, a rooster is a world-conquering man who is out to collect all the infinity stones for his gauntlet. Yeah, that's so he's that's, basically saying in an intelligent way, man, it's only one of them niggas in every circle. Okay, Damn that's... near, it's only one. Usually, women want the rooster, they want that nigga. You know, what I'm talking about that's and, playing and, with chicken. The, the problem, the problem with, <laughs> that's playing with chicken, the, problem, the rooster that's playing with chicken. You know, what I'm talking about the, pro- the problem, the problem with the rooster is the rooster is gonna roost. And exactly. usually women want the rooster to just roost in their nest. And just stop roosting out the blue. I don't know what y'all His job is to roost. Listen. You feel me? I'm a rooster. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> so usually I tell my homegirls, just get you a Reggie, bro. They're going to mm-hmm. love you. They're going to come home every day at 630. Well, right? I think that you should tell regular women to get a regular man. You know, I'm not a regular woman. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. my man is not regular. Okay. No. And he is, I'm not going to call him a rooster, but he's playing with chicken for sure. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, Do you think it's possible for women to fall in love with a broke man? Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's possible for women to fall in love with anybody that's confident, but broke men aren't usually confident. If he's a confident broke man? I know a lot of confident broke men. Could you love a broke man? No, no, no. You know a lot of, I'll answer that. You love a lot, I mean, you know a lot of broke men that Mm -hmm. are confident, but Mm -hmm. you don't know them from a woman's point of view. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They be capping like they confident. From a woman's point of view, a broke man, especially dating a woman that has a little bit of something, Mm -hmm will try to make you dim your light and will try to bring you back down to his level or try to, you know, box you in because he's not having the movement and the motion he's wanting. So um, he's not really confident when he's broke. A, a man that has his shit together is confident. Was you confident when you was broke? Yeah. Because I was. Too confident. I was way, I've been confident to, when I didn't have But nothing. look where you got, Me too. look where you came, rose up to, you know? That's a what lot I'm saying. So you are, can't be a no, broke but, nigga that's confident and end up touching some chicken and becoming a rooster. You know what I'm talking about? But were you ever really broke, though? Like, broke to me I've isn't just money. It's not just money. It's a mentality. It's a mentality. I ain't never been broke. That's what I'm saying. Right. So he could be fine as ever. And people confuse, like, a man that's fit and fine with confidence. I know a man that's fit and fine who has no confidence when you can call him fat and he'll run in the bedroom and cry. But like a, a fit man, like if you say something about his body or you're like, your abs ain't really showing today, this man breaks, you know what I'm saying? So, but then I know another man who, he ain't worried about none of that. He's just confident and just fly, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's like confidence is really where the money's at. Mm, and yeah, that, that's and that's what's in you, that's not what's on in you. you. Not what's on you. You can't buy it. That's not an outfit. You can't drip in that. That's just your blood. Like that's your emotion. So. Do you consider yourself a rooster or a chicken? I'm. I think I'm a rooster. <laughs> no, you mama. think you're a rooster? You know you're a rooster. Mm. Well, I don't think that. Usually, typically speaking, you can't self-identify as a rooster. You have to be known as. That's one, not true. You hands. are whatever you say. If you if I if you don't think it, I'm not gonna think it. I understand what you're saying. A rooster knows he's a rooster. I understand what you're saying. So are you a rooster? That's tough. That's not tough. It's not tough. 
It's, you can't, you either it or you're not. It's no gray area. In it's fact. my turn. I feel you. It's your turn. You're right. <laughs> you're Come right. On. Yes. There we go. That's it. End you're standing conclusion. on it. Hey, I just man. learned how to say standing on business on sign language. Can don't, I tell you? Don't start saying that standing shit. Because there's a lot of niggas saying it and they ain't standing on shit. Business. Oh, Always, you say it in sign language? <laughs> yes. For real? Standing on business. I feel like when you standing on business, you ain't got to say it. <laughs> Facts. Niggas already know how you just gotta sign you fucking it. with it. You can do all that shit. I ain't got to do none of this shit. Niggas well, know what true, I'm standing because on. Because you have to self-proclaim that you're standing on business. Immediately, In yes. order for it to identify. Yeah, like everything starts with... In what with, world? Not in my world. Everything well, starts according with the power Niggas say he gets... Nigga, it's true. According to what she just said about roosting, you have to self-proclaim it. It's true. Because, I mean, I'm not saying you got to scream it to the rooftops, but I'm saying that you got to tell yourself, oh, I'm standing on business. Because if you're not saying it and thinking it and, like, having those conversations with yourself, you gonna, you might slip off the thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you tell yourself, oh, I'm standing on business. I'm not worried about that. Like, you tell yourself it's that. It's just you, a reminder. It's a reminder. I'm not saying, everybody, I'm standing on business. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but, like, you know, you stand on business. This is going to be an interesting episode. You know what I'm talking about? It's your boy, Louis Bell. You understand me? Welcome to the Cali Kickback. Feel me? We got a legendary uh, fella fella in the building, man. You understand me? Uh, L.A. legend. You feel me? You might have known him from being in house party. You feel me? This the only DJ I know that be in movies and shit. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know how this is happening, but I'm happy for him. You know what I'm talking about? The one and only legendary DJ Head in the building, man. Come on. Yeah. Let's give a round of applause let's for DJ go. Head. West Coast on. That's it. You understand me? <laughs> Christina Mackey, how you feeling? I feel the best I've ever felt. Mm, you feeling good. I heard you got a new crush. Shut up. Yeah. Uh-huh. No, because you be on here talking crazy shit about how niggas ain't shit and how you a boss. You done found your match? Are you serious? When have you ever heard me say men aren't nothing? When did you hear me say that? I'm just putting shit in your mouth. You've never heard me speak down on men. I. That's the total opposite of what I do. You right. You know. I, I, I but I that. always say like I'm single like I'm like he's like you don't talk to nobody somebody's hitting that he always says that to me I'm like no he thinks I'm lying but you know what I noticed though mm -hmm. a lot of my friends be going a long time without nothing yeah like what you mean it's easy they really don't be getting no masculine attention that's not true let me rephrase homegirls my homegirls okay. really don't be getting they really don't engage in coitus with men a lot okay okay Quite this is this is interesting topic because <laughs> we had uh um uh, keisha e she a comedian from detroit she live in los angeles and she swear black men don't approach her in la i could see that but it's not specific to la mm -mm. why she said la and i'm like nah you talking about hollywood she like is she i've been in inglewood yeah it, well again going back to what i said that's a whole nother conversation i don't know i don't know where she is or who she is mm -hmm. but blessings to her <laughs> but so what you talking about because you kind of saying the same shit she was saying i can see why do you approach how women? why no. what makes you not approach women um i probably take i have a real obtuse approach to women and my shit is more like why <laughs> what you what, mean what? why you trying just, to just because dude, when you go in the store right mm -hmm. do you buy everything you like matters where i'm at <laughs> and what i can afford see me i don't i don't really spend money or buy nothing even if i want it i buy shit i need mm -hmm. or i buy shit that is you that. didn't need that hat <laughs> what you mean this one yeah you didn't need that i need to replace the other one and i did need it for a shoot you needed the hat yeah <laughs> who'd you think christina he need a hat. He need a hat. All right. Well, let me shut the fuck up. Go he ahead. need a hat. Um, but the, the the point I'm making is, I look at women as not like, oh, I got, oh shit, she fire. I gotta have a. That's not what draws me to you. That might stimulate like, it's a part the of the visual. brain. It's called the amygdala, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you attracted to some part of a woman or something like that, that part of the brain gets triggered. I override that with, yeah, but is she a headache? See, I look at women as market price, like food, right? Uh -huh. You don't know what you're going to pay until the bill get there. Uh -huh. So when I go in, when I talk to women, I'm looking at it like, okay, yeah, you look good. You might be a, you might have a nice smile or whatever, but uh -huh. what is it going to cost me? And that's what I care about. So I usually will entertain women and speak to them in that manner until I know what the actual price is. I don't like it just being MP on the menu. Would that change okay. if you had all the chicken you wanted? Huh? Would that change if you felt like you had all the chicken you wanted? No. I'm just cheap in general. 
I'm, <laughs> I'm like that. I'm cheap. I'm cheap. I'm cheap yeah. in general when yeah. it comes to even. I'm speaking figuratively about women, right, but right. I'm cheap when it comes to women, and I'm cheap when it comes to finances. Yeah. I don't want to spend. I, I don't want to overspend for anything. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Are you Aries? Capricorn. Capricorn. Oh, see, I'm a Taurus, and they be saying Taurus is the cheap one. So it's like this might just be different niggas. What are you? Yeah, I'm a Virgo. Day after Beyonce. Mm. You see how his face just did that? Cause he mm. knows expensive. What, what? Why you? Sometimes you don't look at women as assets. Yes, the right. Cause thing. I don't look at women like they gonna cost me something. I look like how much this woman can help me get what I'm trying to get. That's how you. That's how you supposed to. But I look at everybody like that. But do you exactly? Feel like you... And then, until it flips. Uh -huh. You know how in school, like the teacher would start you off with an A and your job to keep it. I start everybody at fifty percent. It's your job to go work up. Exactly. It's not because I feel like everybody in your life has to earn their position. That's a fact. Nobody gets a free pen. My mom, women, my brothers, mm -hmm. whoever it is, everybody has to earn a position in your life. Nobody gets a free ride just because they love you, they gave birth to you, or not. Nobody, everybody has to earn their spot. Mm -hmm. So, that being said, I'm looking at the woman like, okay, yes, you are beautiful and you might be smart, but how is that applicable to what I'm doing? So, but what about the women that's got what you're looking for, right? Like, uh, as a standard, it. right? And she she posing to get chosen. She ain't gonna walk up on you because she she apprised how she feeling. So you ain't gonna be like, all right, she, you feel me? A take one or no one. So let me walk over there and go holler. I have, but that's mm -hmm. very rare. Yeah. I probably, and to be honest with you, I probably got at mm -hmm. maybe six women in the last seven years. Nigga, hell no. Nah. So you, what you get on went, bitches where, like on the internet? Listen, where I went out of my way to be like, who are you? And I need to know you. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So how you knocking bitches on the internet? I don't, I don't know what you talking about. Damn, you the <laughs> first nigga to ever come on here and say that. What you Have mean? you ever? Been I in like love? your honesty. Uh, I'm, I'm too honest. That's my problem. That's my problem too. Uh, you said what? Have you ever been in love? <laughs> that's tricky. To have what, you ever felt passion? To what, to what, there you go. So to what you humans have described to me as love, I've been in it once before, maybe. Once before, Because nobody knows what love is, in my opinion. That's my opinion. Like, if you ask 10 people what love is, you get 10 different definitions. Mm -hmm. So what, so have I been in what you think? Maybe. Have I been what I think? Probably not. What was the magnitude of your love? For me, it's me, me being willing to compromise the things that I'm unwilling to compromise on a day-to-day -day basis for that person. That's how I look at it. So you think love is compromised? Mm. No, that's just that's just the things of how I'm able to. That's the metric that I apply in my brain, how I'm able to quantify it. So you as an ET, then tell me what you think love is for you. For me, I don't think it exists. Really? You don't think love exists? What define love? I think it's the only answer. Honestly, it's the one you thing talking about, like everything. in love with a woman. Or are you talking about love in general? Fuck what you define love. What is your Shit. that's what he's saying. Unlimited loyalty. That's love to me. That's okay. unlimited loyalty. That's not love. Ah, that's a good point. Because when a woman when a woman um, takes a man back after cheating, mm -hmm. I think that he broke unlimited loyalty, but the love is so deep or the connection is so deep that you're not possessing a man just because of ego. Like, oh, you're mine. You can't sleep with anybody else. Mm -hmm. Like, that's ego. So if you're saying that you unlimited loyalty is love then you'll never really receive that especially as a man who's attracted to multiple women do you see what i'm saying like do you feel like you can be with one woman forever and never cross her that's unlimited loyalty but i disagree do you see what i'm yeah, saying no because that's that. what that's what you guys say like that's what anybody anybody can cross you but it matters what the relationship and what happens before and after and how y'all go about it if you and the virgo that you're in love with mm -hmm. if you stepped out on her mm -hmm. That's not unlimited loyalty. So that's not your definition. That's your of love. definition to his point. No, you said unlimited loyalty. That's not my unlimited definition. loyalty is no matter what the fuck we go through, we gonna have to figure it out. I also think that it's conditional. The only unconditional love I can ever really think about, and I'm not a parent, is probably from a parent to a child, and that's one directional. Mm -hmm. I don't think unconditional love exists in any other relationship mm -hmm. outside of kids. Outside of parent to kid, parent to kid. What about kid to parent? No, no, conditional. Look how some of us treat our parents sometimes. Conditional love. I don't fuck with it like that. I don't fuck with it like that. You have so that's great different. parents. I got good parents and I'm and good to still my together parents. Together that's you. Different. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. In, I'm, I'm talking. Whenever I speak, I'm speaking yeah. very general, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is. White people don't fuck with it like that. I think that love. 
That's niggas. Like, you couldn't answer it, mm-hmm. and you, you probably can't answer oh, it. Oh, mamas. That's my point. Yeah. So when somebody say, have you ever... D-? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just the only nigga that's willing to say, I don't know what love is, and be mm-hmm. really honest about it. You could say you love somebody, but what is it? So would you rather have love or loyalty? I don't know what love is to know. Mm. I know I love a loyal man, though. For sure. I love a man that... Love, to me, this is this is my, this is me, my own thoughts. Mm-hmm. I don't think love is a thing. I think love is an expression. Nah, because niggas can act like they love you and they don't love you. It's fake love. You can express love. And What's real love, then? That's what now he's saying. You, now you're okay, now yeah, you're I'm, I'm here with you. I ain't, he nigga, said, I ain't know. thinking. <laughs> I love love so motherfucking much. I'm just... Yeah. Yeah, I believe in a little bit. Mm-hmm. You believe in marriage? No. Okay, that makes sense. It makes sense. I never, she don't either. I never wanted to get married until recently. Oh, don't start that bullshit. I mean, you know oh, what? Oh, hell no. But listen, though, we all, <laughs> we all used to be infants, and we all used to shit on ourselves before we knew better. So mm-hmm. I never wanted I never felt the need to sign this piece of paper and validate my love. Like if Agreed. you want to buy me the ring and us fill our union in our own way, then I'm down for that. I love jewelry. So I love the ring. You know, I love the idea that my man bought me this. Like, you know, what I'm saying. But the contract and you telling me my credit score changes, my business, everything is like automatically divided. Um, I think that that. I That's thought everything come together when you get married. Yeah, you everything does. One. Everything yeah. is, and it's also like a thing. Like, so if you marry the right motherfucker, and, yeah, shit. But now two I think, always better than one. Yeah, now I think that I would just. I'm so for a prenup. I'm so for like you had your own shit before me and that's I'm not entitled to that. That is not mine. That's wrong for me to think that I deserve that. I think that you shouldn't leave me high like you know high and bothered. You know what I'm saying? But I also think that I mean high and bothered. I meant to say out abandoned. So if you marry if you got married to motherfucker just say for instance Beyonce, you prenup. you doing a prenup. 100%. That's not your money. That's not your money. That's not your work. That's not your hustle. That's out. That's because you're looking for a come up. Right. No, I'm just looking for whatever the fuck she willing to offer. But see, that's the problem, you know? Can I? I'm a bait nigga, so it's different how we fuck with it. So that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Like, if you were there for the right reason, Mm -hmm. you would have signed the prenup and known that if you guys' love was as serious as you thought it was, or they, you know, you guys as a union Mm -hmm. thought it was, Mm -hmm. you would have signed the prenup and. You would have been good regardless, you know? Can I expound on that? Sure. That's how I feel about relationships. Go ahead. Why do I need to call you something Mm -hmm. to validate the value or whatever we have going on? Your name is DJ Head. That's because I was made fun of. I didn't pick that. Niggas wouldn't call me Aaron. It was like, no, nigga, your name is Head. (laughs) (laughs) You do got a head. The fuck you mean? Like, that's not, that's not, you think like, I'm from the, I'm from, you know, we from the ghetto. Yeah. That's how you get your, you don't get, niggas niggas who pick their name be weird to me. Facts. That's fact. That's a different era though. That is a different era. You didn't need to take the hat off all dramatically. He not ashamed of his head. Oh, I'm 100, I'm so comfortable with with myself. Like, mamas, that's how niggas supposed to be. Yeah, There's I'm not. Oh, mama. <laughs> I thought it was like a nasty thing. Honestly, I, everybody think that. Yeah. No, it's just it's I and it's H E D. Oh, for real? It's no I A because I'm good at video games. Mm-hmm. Like my whole life, I'm being hard better than niggas in the old school video games like Come Street on. Fighter, yeah. Mario Kart. It, you can get a high score and put your initials, mm-hmm. and it was only three spaces, so I took the A out. That's nice. how. That's like it's not like that's crazy. Higher. Yeah. Hey. What's up with it, y'all? It's called Sonny Bo. Um, I know y'all ain't heard from me in a minute. You feel me? Because we lost two times in a row, you feel me? But today is a good day, you feel me? Because we get a break, you feel me? We get to regroup, you feel me? Let's get back on this gangster shit, you feel me? Lost Oakland Raiders, nigga. We ain't no suckers, feel me? We down, but we never out, you feel me? On my mama. So check it out. And I got a comedy show. Me and Marshawn Lynch and Louis Bell, you feel me? So after the after the uh, game, you feel me? Because you know we playing on Lost Oakland next week, right? So after the game... Pull up on me at the Laugh Factory, you feel me? I'm hosting a comedy show. Me, Louis Bell, and Beast Ball. Ah! Oh, my mama, Marshawn Lynch really finna be there. Nigga, I'm really finna be there. And Louis Bell finna really be there. So get your tickets right now, big bruh. I see y'all, you feel me? So the plan is we gonna win and we gonna do a comedy show. Ah! Dumbass lost open.
But it go back to my point, like, all right, your name DJ Head, right? Mm -hmm. But that's like you name. That's what niggas called me. That's what niggas called called you. Niggas called me Head. Be- and they wouldn't call me anything else. So you added the DJ on there. I became a DJ later. I wasn't always a DJ. I was just head. <laughs> oh, okay. So I see now what it's DJ said. head. And they t- and they named you that. No, no, they the named homies, him head. The homies would just call me head. He, well, what about the DJ? He chose his occupation, Correct. which added to his name. I went to college and mm-hmm. I went to radio broadcasting mm-hmm. school and got my certificate and I started learning how to DJ because the homie told me that I could be that I was going to be his DJ. So I learned how to DJ. So that's like stamping you being a DJ even though you was a DJ. You could have been DJ head and just been head without the DJ. I don't know what he's asking me. What I'm saying he's is... No, look. What I'm saying is... This shit might sound crazy. But what I'm saying is you saying... What's the point of being in a relationship, right? And I got to call you whatever the fuck. Make right. up a name right. that's going to solidify it being right, right, right. more, right? Oh, you're saying the title thing. Why the fuck? Why the title? Have, why why you have... say you DJ head? And you could have just been head. I to understand. Oh, I see what you're saying. Very good. I agree with the you. DJ, I'm a comedian. The DJ solidified what you did. It didn't. It did. It didn't. Because head, we, you could keep saying head, 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 and you can get to a point where you're Steve big Aoki enough. Steve Aoki is a DJ. You can get to you, a point where you're big enough to be just head. Exactly. But you saying DJ head, everybody's like, oh, DJ head, yeah. Or you could say head, who's head? Head who? Oh, DJ head. Like, DJ gave So it goes back that. to relationship. It gave who you the girl, who, who, who girl or who man is that? That's so such a such girl. For me to say that I'm your woman and for you to say that you're my man, it solidifies what we're doing. Exactly. That's why it's necessary. I understand that. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. That's yeah. my point. I get that. But why don't you do it? It's not that I don't do it. I, I look at relationships, marriage, all of that. I, I actually made this comparison and I got a lot of heat for it because I did it on the radio. Mm-hmm. But like, I feel like marriage and relationships, titles, dating, all of that shit, it's like avocado toast, right? Mm-hmm. It's just some bullshit that white people made up, and mm-hmm. we all just agree that it's a thing, mm-hmm. and I don't fuck with it, but one day I might try it. Avocado toast is off the chain. With it's not breakfast. Peppers, it's breakfast. It's not. It's a hearty breakfast. Get your point, though. It's some bullshit that somebody made up. We all agree that, all right, fuck it, we'll fuck with it. Like, you just brought up rings, right? Yeah. Uh, the other problem, the other part that I have is growing up a certain way, I grew up Christian and all that, like all the stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I was taught all these different things and I had to go and once I hit like 30 when I went through this enlightenment phase I started reading books and educating my I had to unlearn all the things that I was learned that I was taught in my life and learn your own way and learn exactly. my own way and upon learning my own way I'm like oh so I started doing extensive research mm-hmm. engagement rings ceremonies it was a way to music, make more money profit mm-hmm. sell the diamonds all the, the program mm-hmm. now if I meet a woman not if I meet if I have a woman when when mm. When I meet a woman and she says, you know what? Um, you know what, babe? Because women like to do that. Um, <laughs> you know what, babe? I don't think Valentine's Day. I think Valentine's Day is some bullshit. Mm-hmm. However, I have been conditioned my whole life to believe that this February 14th date is significant. Mm-hmm. And because I've been brainwashed my entire life, I would like you to participate in the bullshit with me. Mm-hmm. I, will, I will get out. Exactly. Yeah. I respect that. I fuck I, with it like that. I That's how I fuck it. That's some real nigga shit. Yeah, yeah. I respect it. I, I wouldn't even celebrate Thanksgiving I, if it wasn't for everybody else, my family and, my, and the kids. Yeah, I don't celebrate it. But, mm. I mean, if my friends are having a gathering and we're eating and mm. you need me to tell you that I'm thankful for you today mm. specifically, exactly. I will. Yeah, That's sure. what it's more but about. But I'm, I'm not going to ever tell my man, like, babe, I know this is like... but I. I do acknowledge it the way you do as well. Like, I think all of it is bullshit. I think everything that we've learned is bullshit. I think, you know, that's why it is important to do your own analysis sure. of everything. Literally everything. Christian, mm. Christ, all of that. Everything. everything. Religion, yeah. religion exactly. education. It's all facts. divisions. And then school, when people, the school system, all of that shit yeah. is programmed motherfuckers to be a certain way. When, I don't fuck with it like when that. When you divide people, mm-hmm. you create programs within the division that creates financing opportunities so you know this church specifically this church specifically this you know ring this some um ceremony it's all ways for everybody to make it's economical finance you say you went to college right i went i mean i went to cerritos community college you still went i ain't step a foot on that motherfucker but i just went to get my radio certificate really okay i'm talking to two people that's went to college before Mm -hmm. how do y'all feel about that but y'all end up going to college because that's just the big that's the biggest that's one of the biggest fucking scams i tell you all the time now i'm in college just to have a bunch of certificates on my wall i want this degree that i'm getting three degrees right now Mm -hmm. it's not for any reason that i want to use the degree i'm in my career field outside of me having a degree i'm living my dream life you're just doing what you like to do i'm learning 
however I want to learn. And if it's me listening to a professor talk for four hours and I knew what she was going to say or I, uh, you know, went home and did my own homework, whatever, I'll do whatever. But I have three degrees. So the people who do believe in the programming are going to respect me. You know what I'm saying? I Fuck them respecting you. No, no, no. Because you still have to participate in this. You have to participate in it. Okay. That's I see the what thing. You there's no way to mm -hmm. not participate and go where I'm heading. Yeah. You know, where I'm yeah. heading is max participation. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So in order for me, this is what I always say. There's always more respect to be given. Like you ever been to a restaurant and they're like, oh ma'am, the table's sold out, and then Rihanna walks in and they're like, clear the motherfucker pathway. Rihanna's in here. I want all the respect. I don't want mm. just a little bit. I don't want to be on the waiting list. I want you to tell them you're bumped down because Christina Mackey's in the building. Mm. Like, I want all the respect to be given. And I know that there's ways to do that and you gotta participate sometimes. I don't wanna participate, but I want three degrees on my wall. I want four degrees on my wall. Right now I'm getting three so of them. So y'all participate in that shit, but wanna participate in love and marriage and all that. I don't that. wanna no, wear I am. I'm, I'm participating in huh? love. I don't wanna part I don't wanna wear pants, bro. I wear pants because I'm glad you wear pants. <laughs> it would have been uncomfortable if you walked this motherfucker. You gotta wear naked. pants in society. You gotta wear pants. You gotta do the thing. Like you gotta do the thing. Do you really think that, like for instance? You're doing it right now. You're have you ever got to get up at five in the morning? Uh huh. Have you ever put jeans on at five in the morning? Yeah, it's Jakey. Did, did you want to do that? No. -uh. So why did you do it? It's Nigga, I'm programmed. Needed to be done. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, so I participate in a lot of the bullshit. I'm not willing to sacrifice a couple of things. I gotta keep it. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, I feel you. Yeah, yeah I ain't cool. with the school shit, but I sacrifice some other shit. I wear pants in public. Yeah, yeah. You got that? <laughs> oh, mama. I'll let you have that one. I'll let you, you have that you one. Yeah, that. yeah, I wear yeah that's life. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I feel you. I'll, pay, you I'll pay mortgage. All right, you got that, champ. You are heard, because I agree. So West just Coast? so you know. Yeah. Like. Mm. Christina Mackey, the, the question I always wanted to ask you, <laughs> um, I posted a meme on my social media account. And you put a comment on there. You wasn't agreeing with what I posted. What'd I say? Um, I posted the meme. It said, at the age of 18, they will let you commit to $200,000 in student loans, but won't give you a two a 20000 business loan. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Yeah. And you disagreed with me and was like, that's some bullshit. Yeah. I didn't say that. That's not what I said. But what I did say was... A $200,000 student loan mm -hmm. puts a student in the mind frame of being able to responsibly handle a $20,000 business loan. So if a student chooses to go get in debt $200,000 and pick their college, that's fine, right? Because it's going to teach them responsibility. A, a lot of times people go to college and they don't learn nothing. They come out the same way they went in. Mm -hmm. but more times than not, people learn how to grow up and how to be an adult and how to handle responsibilities and manage money. Like you in know, the real world, in college, college is in definitely college. A camp for it's life. like it's a okay. it's, it's a way to prepare you for what's about to happen. You get financial aid and disbursements. It's like, hey, we're going to give you two thousand this time. If you do, if you stay in school, if you get good grades, we'll give you four thousand next time. Then we'll give you a smaller disbursement of one thousand. You know, and they break the money up so you're like, okay, I can't eat this this week. I got a micro budget. I got a da 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 da. Mm -hmm. So college sets you up for the real world, but just handing you a $20,000 business loan straight out of high school, mm -hmm. you're probably gonna fuck it off. But handing you the opportunity to go to college and get some knowledge and some new skills, you'll probably learn, hopefully, if you're paying attention, if you're doing your work, mm -hmm. you'll learn how to manage that $20,000 in a more effective way to make 20 million. You agree with that, DJ? I like her. You okay. keep her around. She's here for a reason. <laughs> We all here for a reason. We <laughs> challenge each other. Because yeah. I ain't going, just how you ain't going for the bullshit me either. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 it makes total sense to me. Like, I'm not giving a fresh high school kid, I mean, fresh out of high school, 20000 of anything. I got an $800 credit card and, and I didn't understand it. Of what course, age? at a high school. Right at high school. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait a minute. So we was going to Lids and we was buying white tees. And I'm like, so I just got to swipe this and I could leave? And they were like, yeah. Really? Is up. Mm. I'm <laughs> yeah. 18. I'm yeah, 18. so you just fucked 19. it all off. Now imagine putting a two, another zero behind that. Yeah. He would have had a great, you know, teen year, but right now he would be definitely struggling trying to get that right. If, like, I mean, you always say, I mean, I'm older now, but, like, even, even seven years ago, if I would have known what I know now about business and companies and corporations and taxes and all kind of mm -hmm. stuff, I would definitely move different. Mm -hmm. And you think you would have learned more of that in college if you would have stayed in there? No. 
life teach life taught me that but i don't think this is the this is the privilege that the the, the new generation has i sound like an old nigga now but <laughs> the um this is the privilege that people have in this era mm -hmm. because it's so much information around mm -hmm. i didn't I, we had myspace mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah, mama. that's it yeah. There wasn't no Twitter, wasn't no Instagram, wasn't no podcasts, right. yeah. wasn't none of that. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't learn, wasn't no EYL, it wasn't none of that. Right. And if there was, it was one version of it, so you're not yeah. able to really dig. Yeah. We know? didn't have none of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even if I did, like, we had access to books, but you want to hide something from a nigga, put it, put it in, in the book. book. <laughs> oh, mamas. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm, be, like, I was listening to a book on the way over here. Yeah. Like, I, I'm, I'm in that now, but. Yeah. But. It's so interesting to me when I see like younger people into it. I'm like, damn, I wish I would like yeah, if they I was, get an advance because it's like, show. bro, you 20 years old. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I just started my business. I'm running a um because I'm teaching I'm teaching the homies like how to write off their cars to their businesses and mm -hmm. like do all that kind of stuff so you don't have to owe taxes and all kinds. And they were like, yeah, you know, I did it and I'm doing this and especially all the young homies getting rap money. Like the, one of the homies, he, he had like a couple hundred thousand in his house just sitting there. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? So I'm finna go to, he was about to go, I ain't finna say, but he's finna go buy an expensive car cash. Damn. And I was just like, bro, don't do that. So I had to literally, I text Break him, I text him a list of cars he can buy mm -hmm. that's over 6,000 pounds. Then I text him, go to this credit union, put this amount in there, do this, say this, mm -hmm. do this, do that. And then he got the, you know, yeah. thing, the thing he wanted, but it's set up right and he get the, uh. The six thousand mm. pounds is the key. Yeah, so that's why you got a good, a lot of good relationship with artists. Cause I, I noticed. Um, that's not why. It's not why. Why do you have a lot of good relationship with artists? As a DJ, cause, cause I, I find it, I find it very rare. It is different. You stand out to me because a lot of uh, DJs and people that's on these radios don't have a lot of good relationship with artists. I'm the guy in my city um, who, you know. I tell the artists what they don't want to hear a lot. I don't like nothing. I don't like I don't like a lot of music. So the reason why I guess to answer your question, the reason why is because I grew up broke, mm -hmm. broke as fuck, poor, mm -hmm. right? Welfare till I was 18. They kicked us off the whole shit. Mm -hmm. All I had access to was topical layer of music, meaning for mm -hmm. the masses, meaning mainstream music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was never the guy, man, you heard the new Lil Wayne mixtape? Mm -hmm. I was never that guy mm -hmm. because I couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. This is before Burn What about CD. Line Wire and all that shit? This is before that. Oh, I'm 39, bro. Okay, all right. Okay. Uh huh. So this is before all of that. So I was never the, the guy digging through the, 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 I was never that guy. Mm -hmm. I consumed what was fed to me through programming. Oh, okay. So my ear got trained through mainstream media. Mm. So I listen for mainstream media when I'm listening to music. I don't listen for the album cut that everybody like, man, number seven on that album go crazy. I'm so that's listening. what your ear is trained for. So my ear is trained mm. for the masses. Big. Not wow. black people, not white people, Whoa. not Mexicans, for everybody. That's oh, good. Okay. You understand? That's yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. So when I go to the studio and a nigga hit play, I listen to five seconds, I'm like, no, three. go to the next one. Three seconds. Three, Yeah. No, we call it the needle drop, it yep. is three seconds. You No, no, nope. no. Oh, let me hear no. that. Yep. No. No. <laughs> Mm. So, yeah. so the reason why I have That's this relationship real. with the, with these artists is because one, we came up together, like the TDEs and the Kendricks and the, and the, the YGs, and we all kind of came up together. Like we all came, well, not YG, he was younger than me, but mm -hmm. we all came up together. Oh, okay. Um, and, and you was just DJing at the time, and they was doing their thing. Yes. Okay. So, like, actually, if you go, like, on it's on, it's on our YouTube, on Homegrown Radio. If you look at our YouTube, like. And we had a couch just like this in the studio. We was in Chuck's apartment when K Dot changed his name to Kendrick Lamar. Mm, He's like, you no, was I'm, there. We did the interview. Mm. I'm changing my name officially from K Dot to Kendrick Lamar. We did the interview. What was mm. the cause of that? He just wanted to rebrand re and come it. fresh new, and then he dropped the uh, Kendrick Lamar EP and so on and so forth. But I'm saying that to say, a lot of my relationships is because we all came up together. Oh, okay. Yeah. From LA. Right. Yeah. But then as I got bigger and grown and more and then started I started learning music. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. Music and gang banging are the two things in urban culture that anybody can be a part of. Mm -hmm. With no facts. training. Yeah, facts. You just I can't it. just go be a doctor and start working on her. You can't just do that. Mm -hmm. Facts. But you can be a gang banger tomorrow yeah. and you can start being a rapper tomorrow and you don't have no knowledge of music at all yeah Damn. and then you make the music you come in the studio you set this mic up with your homeboy y'all bob around you get a youtube uh uh nigga kevin gates type beat you rap on the beat right yeah you rap on the beat 
you upload it to Spotify and then you blow my Twitter up like DJ Head don't fuck with me. Mm. Mm, what nigga, the f- you don't fuck with music. Mm-hmm. I see what you saying. That being said, same thing could be said for comics. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So that being said, the reason why I have this relationship is because I go and I'm not finna just play your shit on the radio. I'll, I'll give you an example and this shout out to the homie Lil Deuce from Inglewood, right? Mm-hmm. He had a record that was going crazy called Outside. Shout out to Lil Deuce. Um, my competing, my competitors was playing his shit all on the radio. They Instagramming, oh yeah, you know. I hit, He hit me like, yeah, you know, head ain't fucking with me, man. He ain't playing my shit on the radio. I hit him with a question. Was it registered? Registered with what? For all you artists out there, anybody, any DJ who take your song and play it on the radio and they don't care if it's registered, they using you for clout. Because you don't get, you can't monetize that. Register meaning go to Media Base mm-hmm. and BDS and those track your radio spins. Uh, um, those they, There's like metrics, like Spotify numbers, uh-huh. but it's for radio and oh. they track your numbers. Oh. So every time you play a song on the radio, it gets counted in a log. Right. Mm-hmm. So I said, is it registered? He was like, I don't know what you mean. I said, I know you don't know because them niggas don't give a fuck about you. And I do. And until you get your shit registered, I'm not fucking with you. Mm. True story. Right. Mm-hmm. He told me later on that that changed his life. That conversation we had, because yeah. now he goes and registers his prop. His and, woo, woo, woo. Yeah. and I'm like, the, the, that's my issue. So to, to, to answer your question in a longer story is I don't tell artists what they want to hear. I'm telling you the truth. I'm never gonna hide nothing from you and I'm not gonna use you for nothing. You guys, ask any artist, that's any artist from California. I ain't never asked niggas for verses. I ain't never took no money to play no records. You can't even, if you Google right now on your phone, you won't even find a mixtape that I've hosted since 2010. And why is that? Cause my brand not for sale. People, like for instance, you have a, a general knowledge of who I am, right? Exactly. You know some young niggas that rap in the Bay? Yep. How much do you think you can get me to host a mixtape right now? Just give me whatever number you think. I know of you, so I wouldn't even get at you like that. How much do you think uh-huh. that you, if you wouldn't tell your homie, one of your homies that rap, yeah. and I can get DJ Head to host your mixtape, yeah. how much do you think you can get me for that? Shit, I don't know. I would ask. But if you just say just say a random number? Give me a number that you think. <clears throat> I'll be like, 10. Okay. Let's say I said, give me five and whatever you get on top of that, you can keep it. Would you make money? Just asking niggas that I can get DJ Head to host your mixtape? Would I get Would I get? If I told back? you to just give me... You no. get 5,000. If I told you to just give me five and whatever uh-huh. you charge niggas, you charge niggas. Yeah. You could charge you 100,000. You, 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 you would do five. that, right? We're not talking about morals and principles. We're talking about he's saying, I just only to make want money. five uh-huh. and you could keep whatever else you could get from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would, would that, you do that's that? A, that's a yeah, if it's profitable, I'm going to run the play. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't do that because my brand not for sale. Uh-huh. If I fuck with you, I fuck with you. Exactly. If I don't fuck with you, I don't fuck with you. But there is somebody's mixtape that you would host? If, no, just not, off the strength? Off the strength? Maybe. Okay. It just depends. The yeah. music, if the music is good, but I'm not supporting people who are making music for the homies. Just, yeah. mm. I'm not, because there's only, and, I'm, and I never said this on camera. <clears throat> I'm not going to say his name, but there's only one artist who ever looked me in my face and said, I don't care if I ever make money selling music, um, make money doing music. I just love doing music. Damn. I said, you know what, bro? I respect the fuck out of that, and we ain't got nothing to talk about. Because mm-hmm. I'm in the business of music. Yeah. Yeah. That's like a comic coming to you saying, man, I don't care if I ever make money doing comedy. I just love doing it. Damn. Man, you know what? I respect it. Yeah. But, nigga, we ain't the same. Yeah. I'm trying to really take it there. So my point being, uh-huh. yeah. if you're there, that's what I look. That's how I look at dudes making music for the homies, yeah. making music for your section, making music for the. I'm making music for the turf, bro. What like? Are, what are you trying to do this thing? Or are you not trying to do? This Is that thing? dangerous doing that in Los Angeles? Because yes, I, yeah, right. Yes, I've been in situ- precarious situations, but you even got Charlemagne before. No, I haven't been punched in the mouth for that. I, I've been punched in the mouth before, but not because of that. Oh. But who punched Charlemagne in the mouth? It was some dudes from New York that want they act like they wanted to drop. But mm-hmm. um I've been in a real uh, in real situ- like sh- the homie Wack. Sh- Wack 100. Mm-hmm. I-, I was in the studio. Ask him and he'll tell you the story. I was in the studio with him and 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 he'll t- I'm going to leave it at that. He'll tell you that story. But it's another story where I was around some some other homies from the East Side and 
I was there. I go by myself. I came here by myself. Yeah. Like, I go everywhere by myself. Or I'm with Silas. Yeah. So I pull up and we listen to the music and I'm like, this shit is like, they were like, man, we'll tell, me, tell us what you think. We really know in your honest opinion. See, sidebar, just like dealing with women, dealing with artists, it's the same to me. And that's what makes me weird because I don't have a filter if you request information. Exactly. Now, I won't walk in and, I won't walk in and volunteer my, my Exactly, opinion. but leave me the fuck out of this. Yeah. But if you ask me. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. But if you ask me, oh, now you can't dictate how I disseminate the information. I'm really happy you just said that because I'm going to take that clip and send it to my brother. Okay, perfect. <laughs> For so, real. That being when said, I say it, I'm a villain. Yeah. Th- but you asked me. You exactly. asked me. That being said, they was like, what do you think we want to know the real? I said, this shit trash. That's really what I think. And you and, and you in I'm they in, I'm session. In, I'm in they whole, you, I'm in an area, in an area area. You in what, East LA? I, I'm not going to say where I, I'm in a section. Yeah, but you in that, you I'm feel in, me. I'm in yeah. the, you feel me. Yeah. Right? Oh, mamas. So they like, so then I start noticing like they homies just like. Niggas start moving around. Yeah, just yeah. like extra. I said, look, I already know what's. feel it, yeah. I'm like, all right, I feel the energy changing. I said, look, bro, let's just clear, let's just get this out the way right now. I'm not bigger than nobody's program. I said, however, y'all are clear. I'm I'm in y'all space. Y'all asked me to be here, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't ask to be here. Y'all asked me what I think. I told you what I think. Now, I understand exactly what's going on right now, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I'm from here, too. Because you from the shit. So you peep I'm game. from here, too. So, y'all can do whatever y'all going to do. And after y'all finish, your music's still going to be trash. Mm-hmm. Damn. Or I can show you what to do to fix your music. And what they say? They like, it just they it fucked them up. You know what I'm saying? They're like, Shh, damn, nigga, this nigga like, you know, like. But that's how. That's why I moved the way I move, and it's not because I don't have any ill intention. Yeah. And that's that's something that Nip told me when I said some shit to him. He didn't like. I was going and, to ask you that question because because <clears throat> um, it seemed like Nipsey Hussle had a lot of respect for you. You know what I'm saying? And. I'm, I I just feel yo vibe and I feel Nipsey vibe <laughs> and I'm just like I can see y'all having a misunderstanding because oh, yeah. Nipsey was a rapper no, no. but he ain't a rapper no, rapper no 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 we didn't have a misunderstanding it's just I just told him the truth and I told and then I'm not going to recap the whole conversation because it was a, it was a real conversation but yeah. I, I fucked the vibe up in the studio damn and um, on the Victory Lap album yeah, we was playing he's playing me Victory Lap and I loved it and I just said there's something missing though bro like and he was like, what you mean? I'm like, well, I've been me. I, well, I had two conversations with him. The first conversation is is uh, the brand conversation. I told him that I was like, your name is bigger than all your music. Up until Victory Lap came out, Nipsey Hussle name yeah. superseded all his music. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. When you you don't he doesn't have so I, I, I it's marketing and branding which he was an expert at he mm-hmm. read a lot of books and he taught us a lot of stuff and me and my team mm-hmm. but when it comes to marketing and branding you need a Big Mac and what I mean by that is when you go to McDonald's that's what they were selling they moving Big Macs mm-hmm. like clockwork right mm-hmm. then you add oatmeal then you add snack wraps then you add chicken strips chicken tenders then you add nuggets mm-hmm. but you have to be known for something. Mm-hmm. What is your Big Mac? Yeah. Name a name a Ty Dollar Sign song. Um, that nigga got a lot. Um He's just his song just by itself? Name a song. Any song. Beach House? Ooh, I see so, where you're going with it though. That's an album. He's known for hooks. He's no no, his song is Paranoid. paranoid exactly, yeah. Paranoid. Name a two yeah. short song. Now I'm a player. <laughs> you know no, what I'm no. about? Name a two short song. I'm, Blow the whistle. I'm a player. That's a Big Mac. I'm a player as a Big Mac too. So what I'm telling artists is <laughs> that that's the purpose of having, we call it a business card track. Because if you have a fire ass plumber, mm-hmm. you're going to tell Lou one day, man, my plumber fire if he need one. So then you, you, pull it up right away. you yeah. pass it over. Yeah. And now that that's what a single is. Yeah. yeah. When a nigga put their single out, it's your business card because it's in the room when you're not. Mm-hmm. Cardi B, Bodak Yellow. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. That's the purpose of having a business record. Mm-hmm. So what I was telling him is, your brand is bigger than your business your business records. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So where's the record? I need a record that everybody can play, bro. You don't have a record. And and this is where it comes to another conversation that I was having as far as like when I tell artists they don't have no slaps. What you mean? Cause slaps is opinion opinionated. No. It's not. A slap is a slap. 
Are we talking about a hit or a slap? Because I'm hit. from the Bay. We okay. created the uh, uh, word slap. You, you're a right. slap is, nigga, I'm about something I'm fucking with. This shit slap to me. I'm talking about a hit. Okay, a hit. A hit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if you don't have a hit record, then that's fine if that's not your goal. And your haters exactly. know you. Exactly. A haters know a hit record. Like a hit record is a hit record universally. Yo, ops is playing. Yeah. The rest. That's a fact. Low key, they that's still saying a song in the elevator. You know. It's like, man, I hate that nigga. This shit go. But this shit go though. This yep. shit go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Drake is the master of that shit. As mm -hmm. soon as you feel like you ain't fucking with Drake no more, that nigga come with some shit. So like, this the, nigga do go crazy. So in the music business, I was explaining to Nip. I'm like, bro, yo, record. You don't have a record. Mm -hmm. If you go to a DJ and say throw on that Nip to ten DJs. 10 DJs are going to play 10 different records. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. Like when Roddy go out, no matter where he's at, if he's in London, if he's in Compton, if he's in New York, if he's in Bali, if he's in Hawaii, and somebody bring him out on a set, he going to do the box. Exactly. That's a record. And you feel like every artist needs to have? No. I was telling him that's what he needs. That's what he needs. Okay. Yes. Because uh -huh. every artist isn't monumental also. But like, and they also don't have that same ability to reach. Not that they don't have it, but they don't have their own, I think, personal desire to reach. Like, yeah, some artists, like he was saying, like, I'm doing this. I just want to be big in Houston. Like, yeah. I love my city. I'll never leave out of my city. Like, that's this, cool. This is my, but some people have a nationwide, yeah. like, you know, mentality. You, and some, and some people. They want that, but they want it the way they want it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people care more about how they get to a destination than the destination. Mm -hmm. You care about the car you in and not about how, how you, you don't get there. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. So what I'm saying. So my point is, I just told him that and <laughs> I fucked the vibe up in the studio. Yeah, nip going to be nip. And he was I thought he was going to fire on me, honestly. Yeah. Um, not not that he was he wasn't a, he wasn't a violent person. He but, a player, but he stand on shit. But not that that's not why I thought he was gonna fire me. What happened was I was about to leave because the vibe was gone, and I was as I was leaving the studio, um, he was I walked down the stairs and he was rolling his weed by the stairs, and um, he was like um, he's like hey check it out. So that's when I was like oh, shit. Mm, you know what check it out mean right. Yeah. So I walked over there. I was like what's up, bro. Standing on business. <laughs> he was like. <laughs> He was like, um, he hit his weed. He was like, you know what, bro? Like, he said, you be saying wild shit to niggas, bro. He was like, <laughs> he was like, you say wild shit to niggas all the time, and I be seeing it, bro. And he was like, but you know why niggas fuck with you? I was like, why, bro? Because that's what I'm thinking. There's a twist coming, right? Yeah. He's like, you know why niggas fuck with you? I'm like, why? He said, cause your intentions is pure. Mm -hmm. He's like, that's why I fuck with you. Mm -hmm. He said, give me a couple weeks, I got you. Damn. He hit me a couple weeks later. He said, I got one for you, for the, for everybody, for the DJs, for the, for the function, all that. I said, send it to me right now. Uh -huh. He was like, no, nah, I'm going to put YG on it first, and I'm going to send it to you. Mm -hmm. Last time that I checked. That was the last record he recorded for the album. It's like five times platinum, four times That's platinum. that one. I see exactly what you're saying. What's happening? It's your boy, Louis Belt. This episode is sponsored by High Roller. Y'all go tap in. This Motherfucking brand is owned by a black woman. Stop playing. Cannabis, we got all type of flowers and everything, you feel me? So y'all go get the merch. Merch is available right now too, you feel me? Go click the link in the description. Thank you. I love everybody. Hmm. So you risk your life for music. That's not. That's what I'm getting out of this shit. That's you, not what it is. You telling me. I care you, about my people. If you not if you from if you don't disrespect to nobody from the other side, but if you from the West, I care about you. Uh, you said West. You care. I include everything west of the west of Texas, west of the Mississippi. So West. you fuck with the Bay? How you fuck with L.A.? One hundred percent. I was going to the Bay. I was fucking with Zoe and all them niggas back in the day, up okay. until now. Does the Bay not consider themselves the West? Okay. Nah, the Bay is the Bay. <laughs> And L.A. is L.A. And we all West Coast when we come together. But if we ain't together, nigga, we from the Bay. And they fuck with it like that, too. Okay. I fuck with the Bay. It's tough. I love We Bay. fuck with California. It's too, it's too cold. Yeah. I, love Cal I love California. I'm yeah. a, I'm just a West Coast dude. Like, yeah. I just... But also, that came from the lack of resources that we have. That didn't come from... That didn't come from just me being from here. That mm -hmm. came from me coming up in the music business. The reason why I stand on West Coast the way I stand on it, mm. because I didn't, I didn't even like our music growing up when I was a kid. I didn't really? like, I didn't like our music. No, what I, you was fucking with? I couldn't relate to it. I like Bad Boy records. During oh. the whole East Coast West Coast, I was fucking with the the the, the shiny suits and they because you gotta think I I grew up in turmoil. 
Uh-huh. Uh, we was broke and poor. So while everybody, and I was in a gangbanger. I never exactly. gangbanged. I never sold drugs. I don't do drugs now. I don't smoke weed. I don't drink alcohol. I see what you're saying. I'm a square. Uh-huh. I've never been from nobody hood. I never shot nobody. Mm. I never sold no nothing. Yeah. I was going to school. I couldn't relate to the music that we were putting out. Uh. I looked at them like they having fun. I want to have fun because my life is terrible. Mm. So I like that shit. When Westside Connection came out and I heard that intro, I make the whole world bow down to the W. I'm like, yeah, that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. And then... I got into the music business after I went to school for radio. Uh And then I started seeing how hard it was for the West. It's very hard. Because in Cal, and this is back in the day, you got to think in California specifically, you either own or off. Mm -hmm. You either E40 in game or you not. And I think a lot of artists in California don't even understand that. It's a lot of people that that think they're bigger than what they are because they're popping in California. Of course they do. But the prop, but the thing is, then I start going around the country. Like I told you before we started, like I've been to forty three states. People don't fuck with us like that. They don't. <laughs> they don't fuck with us. Yeah, they don't. They don't mm-hmm. fuck with us. So once I start seeing that, that further enraged me, and I was like, oh, once I get my shot, y'all gonna feel this West Coast shit. Mm. Once I get, once I get, once I get a microphone, y'all in trouble. That's how I felt. Do you think the West Coast, it, 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 the future is looking bright for us? Because um, yes. it ain't like what it was, you know, what it used to be. It's 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 not that it's look it's not that it's looking bright. It's just that I just I've taken more of a back seat mm-hmm. because I just want to see what niggas gonna do. I left the radio station. I got out the way because a lot of people were saying like, "Oh, DJ has a problem. He always hating. He don't like nothing." All right, I've been going for a year. Mm-hmm. Who got motion? What's going on? Mm. So I'm out the way. The ladies. So, so no, the ladies from here, though. I don't care yeah. about what everybody else got going on. Keep it a buck with you. Yeah. I just don't. Shout out to New York and everybody else. I care about us. Mm. So Yeah, who's the L.A. girl? The fact that you asked that yeah, is that a mean, problem. Yeah. Exactly. You understand? Because yeah. Atlanta, I automatically think Lotto. Lotto. The yeah. fact that you, you know I mean? that's my point. New York, yeah. Cardi. Yeah. yeah. That's my point. Yeah. Our, we have we have a different set of issues that people don't recognize and they think it's because people don't fuck with us. That's not really what it is. It's multiple things. It's demographic. It's, 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 it's literally geography and demographics. Mm-hmm. Then you got politics, but then you got hate like amongst each other. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like our demographic in L.A. specifically, not even the Bay because y'all shit different with the Filipinos, but mm-hmm. in L.A. specifically, our demographic is 80% Latino, Mexican, damn, seven percent black, total. No, infants, really, infants to senior citizens, seven percent. That's our demographic in LA. Eighty percent Latin, eighty percent Mexican, seven percent black. That's why you got these niggas making songs. Like it's not. A, it's Mexicans. not. That's it our can't culture. Eighty percent yeah. Mexican, probably just eighty percent Latin. Well, Latin. Well, our yeah, Mexican. Yeah, we don't have black. Our Latin is not like the East. Like they got Puerto Ricans, Dominicans. Exactly. Our Mexican. Our, our Latin is Mexicans yeah. from Mexico. It's no way. Sure. It's eighty percent Mexicans in L.A. It's Latin. Latin. But yeah. the majority of that is Mexican. Yeah, I see what you said. Not our yeah, culture. Yeah, 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 More yeah. of the story. I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Name it's, niggas. Yeah. It, it's not black people. It's not Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, I know exactly. So then. You, when you add in certain elements for the music scene specific or entertainment business specifically, mm-hmm. you add in transplant. You from the Bay, you from Colorado. Yeah. You add that into the mix. Uh-huh. This is the number one billing market when it comes to a terrestrial radio station for top 40. Mm-hmm. Number two market in the country. So it's top, it's, it's five markets that are top five in the country. Mm-hmm. Number one is New York, mm-hmm. media markets, yeah. inter- entertainment. Number one is New York. Number two is L.A. Mm-hmm. Number three is Chicago. Number four is te- is Dallas. Mm-hmm. And number five is the Bay. Mm-hmm. Damn. Right? So that's why when you get a song or when you get buzz in L.A. and the Bay, you look big west of Texas. Exactly. Because you have two of the top five markets in the country that galvanize around what you got going on, around your movement, your music, whatever it is, right? Uh-huh. But it doesn't cross to the other side exactly. because they have a different lifestyle. A whole them. different rhythm and flow and, and everything. And something else that people don't know, like I said, it's music. We're in the music business. We're in the business of music. You have to know music. The West Coast sound that people always say, oh, it's, it's uh, like Mustard stole this shit from the Bay yeah. or whatever, however you want to bust it down. 
West Coast music is based on funk, the bass guitar. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Down South music is based on blues. That's why all their music slow. Our music is moving. It's two different types of music. Blues and funk are two totally different tempos. Uh-huh. Our tempo is between 90 and 110 BPM. They shit is trap. The reason why you listen to a trap song and you bob your head like this is because the music is too slow for you to bob your head to the real tempo. Bad and Bougie is 64 BPM. Um, Niggas in Paris is 70 BPM. Mm-hmm. Niggas in Paris goes, doo, 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 right? But mm-hmm. you're not about to go. Exactly. Because right. it, it, you know that feels too slow, right. so naturally you double it up in yeah. your head, right? So that's why people think music is fast from the South, but it's not. Mm-mm. It's actually just produced in double time. I know how to produce, I produce music too. So that's why I'm telling you like the technical yeah, aspects yeah, yeah, yeah. of it. So when you make music, when people are making music, they be like, oh yeah, this got this this shit moving, it got a bounce to it. No, it's like this. It doesn't have a natural rhythm to it. Mm. So people making these slow ass songs, and my personal opinion is that's not how that's not how the world sees music. The world lives the world lives their life at 100 BPM. If you Google it right now, mm-hmm. um, like when they talk about um <laughs> like the song, like if you do CPR, if you learn in CPR, they teach you to resuscitate. Singing a song, staying alive. Um, 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 stand. That's 103 BPM. Mm. It's actually 100 BPM we should be living our life at. But people are making these these songs that they think because they see at well, it's Atlanta going to great, so they make Atlanta music. Yeah, not understanding that. I understand what you're trying to do, but you don't know enough about music to implement these things into your music to actually make it translate. So, do you feel like uh, West Coast artists should stick to? the West Coast sound, even though it don't resonate to the rest of the country, or you, he, artists should adapt and add their culture to what's working right now? The niggas that adapt and are doing what's working right now are usually trying to hit a lick. They're not, they're not in it because they love it. Because you're going to naturally carve out from where you're from, and you're going to get seek inspiration from your environment. When you heard, when I heard when I heard uh, 40 and Short, mm-hmm. when I heard HBK, yep. when I heard Zoe and D-Lo and Sleep, I knew they was from the Bay. Yeah. Is that not how it's supposed to be? It's supposed to be that, but that can hinder us. That's only the way you look at it because it don't or didn't work. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, check it out. It's your boy, Louis Belt. Bay Area, you know I had to end the tour in the motherfucking Bay, San Francisco, California, Cobb's Comedy Club, December 14th, get your tickets, LewisBelt.com, I'm breaking Sonny Bo, the whole tour y'all been asking me, when you coming to the Bay, when you come? I'm coming, I'm already here, I'm just, man, I'm here, I'm near, you know what I'm talking about, get your tickets, you know what I'm talking about, be there, I'll be a motherfucking square, I'll see y'all in a minute, thank y'all love, everybody. So do it work or not? You can look at relationships the same way. Uh-huh. Man, man, that bitch cheating on me. Bitches ain't shit. Mm-hmm. Our bitches ain't shit or she ain't shit? The bitch ain't shit. She ain't shit. West Coast. Yeah. I so that saying. being said, when you look at it like that, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I don't want to be preachy, but I'm just saying. No, you spin some shit. No, I really want, I like really what you're saying. Yeah. Don't feel like you're preaching. You're saying some shit. So what I'm saying is, even from a comedy standpoint, mm-hmm. The people had had an issue with Tip when he first started doing his thing because mm-hmm. they felt like he didn't respect mm-hmm. the craft, right? Exactly. Tidbit: When I we just had a conversation about my name, mm-hmm. right? When I first started DJing, I wouldn't even let people call me DJ Head for the first eighteen months because I didn't feel like I earned it yet. Mm. I learned on turntables. I carried crates. This is before the computer. I was carrying crates for my nigga DJ Cali, mm-hmm. DJ Dents, who DJ for the Clippers. DJ yeah. BAD, who one of the hottest DJs in Hollywood. Yeah. Them niggas let me fuck their needles up. Cause I'm I used to get to the club when it club first because I couldn't afford equipment. Yeah. So when the club couldn't when the f- club they first opened but before they opened the door and he's setting up, I'm fucking his shit up. I'm like, I don't get it. I need to learn. I wanted to learn how to DJ. But it's a, but that's what I cared about. Yeah. I actually wanted to invest in learning. Like me being a comedian. I really put my name on an open mic. I did open mics. I learned how to be a comedian from the start versus where I'm at now. Versus other people who might just start yesterday and because they know the owner or because they know this, they walk in there and get 
whatever the slot is and yeah. they bomb or whatever the case may be you might be sitting in the back like man what the fuck i've been coming to this club for three years yeah. it's the same thing it's the same for shit. music escalator yeah. versus the stairs exactly and that's the conversation me and sim be having that makes sense yeah damn so people it's people that notice that type of shit yeah sometimes you're in like a position of power to jump the line and then you get up there and then you realize you're underprepared like you or or you might think you had a good moment like but they really talked bad about ti when he was doing comedy like they was killing him but it's like but i don't understand how niggas talking about ti and let all these bunk ass internet comedians be on stage at least T.I. know how to fucking perform and he got stage but, presence. No, but he, like, we get niggas that straight off the couch that never even been in front of a crowd. You know no, why that's, my, that's my homie. Like, I'm not saying anything wrong. I'm just saying they really No, we talking did. about with the people. Yeah, I'm were, saying my yeah. point is to the people, right. why y'all letting these bunk-ass you internet know I respect motherfuckers him. come? I respect him because he was at places I, he shouldn't. I was, I was walking in and he would do a set. He was doing the circuit. He was doing... He Test the soil. He was everywhere. He was outworking comedians. And I'm like, I respect that though, mm-hmm. yeah. and that's different, yeah. right? It's different. So when an artist still doing it, yeah, yeah. Okay. When an artist approaches it the same way, like for instance, shout out to my dude Garen, he's mm-hmm. singer from Compton, mm-hmm. right? Garen came to me. We went to go eat. He's like, look, man, I'm not. I don't want to ask you to play my music. I just want information. You seem like you got a lot of information. Oh, mama. Just give me information. Yeah. I respect that. Oh, mama's nigga, I ain't asked you to put my song on the radio. Nigga, give me some game. Shout out to Greedo. When Greed, mm-hmm. before he went to jail, I had him pull up to the studio. He was leery. He brought two of his homies. I'm like, look, bro, I don't want nothing from you. I just see you bubbling. And I know people think like I be hating and stuff, but let me give you some game so that way you don't make the mistakes that everybody be making. And we just talked for a couple hours. And I just told him everything that he needed to be doing, do this, do that. And I said, I don't want no, I don't want no verses. I don't want no money from you. I'm not trying to book you. None of that. I'm just here. So to- what do you want out of the game? I need them to win so that way when I go in these buildings with these white people, they 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 put them in these positions. Mm. You don't think when these when these shows be happening, they got future. You don't think I'd be fighting for nip? Facts. I it needs to make sense though. Yeah, you gotta yeah, these niggas gotta do their part so you can do your part. I'm in here fighting with one arm time behind my back because y'all niggas wanna look cool to your homies. Make it make me let help me help you. Hey, look, bro. RJ, hey bro, I need you to I need you to make make you know this record. YG, hey, this record ain't gonna work, bro. Man, this shit hard. This shit ain't hard, bro. Mm. This shit is not hard. I need you too far along in your career to make this. I need you to make a hit record. He dropped Big Bang. Mm. That's a true story, right? Mm-hmm. That being said, I could walk a five time platinum record into the building with these white people and get you a bag that you want mm-hmm. to do whatever because it makes sense to them. Exactly, but it needs to be that. It has to be that. It has. That's why Atlanta be going crazy. Mm-hmm. They got niggas like head out there. It's about ten niggas and like that. Like you gotta pass all of them. Yeah, nigga, yeah. it's a standard. Right. No, it's yeah, true. it's true. Oh, mamas. That's, that's where. That's where the, like the Coast Guard shit came from. It was because it was like, oh, like it's nobody. Nobody wanted to bear the burden of importing and exporting the quality control. Of what's going on? Not that I'm not. I'm not the end all be. I'm just one opinion, but I know what they want. Exactly. I'm in these meetings. I'm in these buildings every day. I know what they're looking for. I know what they want, right? And I never get mad about it because it's business. It's never personal. The song about your mom, they don't give a fuck about that. The song about your your little brother being cancer, they don't give a fuck. They want the hit records. Where are the records? Where are the slaps? We need slappers, blappers, and blammers. Damn. They don't give a fuck. All I'm doing is telling you what they saying when you leave. Mm-hmm. I'm just man enough to tell you to your face. Yeah. Amen. Man, Amen. you a real nigga for that, man. I, I man, let's get a little round of applause yeah. for DJ here for keeping <laughs> it real good. for the culture. Because yeah. that's a fact. Yeah. Niggas be mad at the fact. Don't be mad at the fact. No, you Every really... Every time a nigga hit me with the fact, it helped me. No, yeah. I appreciate it. I'm a Virgo, so honesty is policy for me. Like, I'll oh, hurt you. I know I'll hurt your feelings if I tell you what you're asking me to tell you. It, it could be something different. I do music, too, and I always tell him, like, I'm. it's just not a priority for right now because I'm not producing slaps. Like, <laughs> I'm just not. I'm, oh, I'm, and I'm, the I'm, thing I'm is, venting. I'm getting my, I'm getting my bullshit out. I'm exactly. shooting my... Sh- it's about me. My, so, look. Yeah. Let, me tell you, let me tell you one more thing. Mm-hmm. Same thing I tell... I ain't gonna say who it was. Same thing I tell somebody right when i watched this episode of mtv cribs back in the day mm-hmm. when that show used to air and when 50 cent first bought 
I think it was Mike Tyson's mansion yeah. in Connecticut. Yeah, that was a boy. He put a studio in there. Mm -hmm. And this this stayed with me. I don't even know. This might have been like 03 mm -hmm. or some shit, right? 05 or something, whatever. He was working on his second album, I think. And they was in the studio with him. And 50 Cent said some shit. And he was like, yeah, I'm working on my, my next album. He's like, all you artists that be putting that bullshit out, Talking about this for you, keep that shit on your hard drive. This oh, shit for yeah. the people. I, I say, I say that. And then, so this, what I took from that is, and it's what I tell artists all the time. If you're an artist, mm -hmm. if you make music, that's amazing. If you're making music for you, that's amazing. You making music for your section, it don't matter. Mm -hmm. The only difference is you creating art. Comedy is an art. Mm -hmm. Music is an art. Fashion is an art. It's expression. Once you choose to monetize your art, it is no longer art that belongs to you it is a consumer good and you are at the mercy of the consumer facts give me what the fuck i want if you go to the store if you go to the store yeah. you know how when you go to your favorite restaurant they change the menu like what you I'll, took the soup off taco taco bell always falling off because of that they bro, be you having took some good yeah, shit yeah. and they take it off i'm like i ain't going I don't no need taco bell but they That's do what you that do to often people yeah. when you don't give them what they want yeah <sighs> Yep, I'm off so this right. nigga. Jesus Christ. Oh, mama. I don't yeah. give a fuck about what you went through with this nigga. I like the, the, the record you did with Simba. That shit was hard. Right. I need some more of that. Yeah. Your favorite taco spot. Your favorite, your favorite whatever spot. You go to the spot. They Now, I went to Popeye's one time. They was out of chicken, right? What? You had one job. <laughs> you got yeah. you got me that happens you got me you got one the, even the chicken sandwich you have yeah. one job bro right. to, yeah. to have fulfill our needs prepare and serve chicken yeah <laughs> yeah like you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you give me the funny yeah i don't give a fuck about your day i don't give a fuck what you went through unless yeah. it's funny unless, unless it's funny, funny. <laughs> Damn. i don't care bro yeah i don't care that you just lost your homie yesterday I had a bad day at work. I paid my twenty dollars. I spent. I got a two drink minimum. Your job is to make me laugh. Oh, mama! I don't give a fuck about nothing else. And that's that's the harsh reality yeah, yeah. that you deal with in the entertainment that's business. A fact. So I want people to separate themselves from that. Now, if you don't, if you're not monetizing, that's different. Give us the art all day, but don't go in your studio. And don't, put it on the shelf. And, don't go in the studio yeah. or don't go on stage yeah. and give me all this art. Then be mad that I don't want it. Right. That's not what I pay for, nigga. Mm. Mm. And until you give me what I want, I'm not willing to listen to your other, your fluff. But like, so I, I had a conversation with YG and he was like, I didn't want to make Tootie the Booty. Like, yeah. that wasn't my preference. Yeah. But like, that's what was needed in order for me to say what I want to say. And now I have listeners. Now I have people willing to listen to what mm -hmm. I want to make. Right. Because mm -hmm. he's a long way from tooted and booted. Yeah. Like YG has really created a staple for yeah. himself. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. You know, what's I, funny I really about, you know, what's funny about tooted and booted. Yeah. I, I, when next time you see him, I ask him about this. Yeah. We was at a club. <laughs> I'm DJing and YG finna perform. Mm -hmm. He's like, hey, throw that BPT. No, sir. He's like, what you, nigga, it's 450 girls in here. I'm finna play to the booty. Hey, you got me fucked up throwing BP. Doom, 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 doom. crazy. Nigga, they, ah, they lost their shit. Yeah. He, he was like, he was hot, turned around and just got to performing it. Yeah. Then he had me cut after the first verse. See? These girls are here for that. Yeah, he's right. That's what he's, yeah, he says something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they want, bro. I you mean, are a consumer good. See, the thing about people that be in radio, though, they be feeling like they be knowing what the people need, and they be wrong, too, though. They do. Because we go through that a lot in the Bay. Shout out all the niggas that's doing their shit. But them niggas don't be saying the right shit. Because I be telling the truth, because I'm not a rapper. So I be telling niggas, bro, nobody give a fuck about hearing that shit. Niggas trying to hear this. Because I'm niggas. I understand that. However, mm -hmm. that's, that's another educational thing. Mm-hmm. The radio doesn't cater to niggas. That's a good point. I yeah. think he well, everything Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Everything you're right. he said answered your question about why you wouldn't take the money for it because he said my brand's not for sale mm -hmm. because him putting his name on something that just isn't that exactly. it doesn't that make matter. sense. It should matter so that it's a full circle moment because that for me that answered the question because that exactly. was still pending for me. Yeah. So I feel like, boom, I got it. Like, I could tell you how radio work, yeah. but it'll destroy the allure of it for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm already knowing. I'd have had these conversations. With it ain't it ain't money or payola or none of that. It ain't it's that. It's systematic. 
They it pay, they playing songs for the mother for the average motherfucker that's getting a rental car that's Correct. driving into San Francisco. Correct. And that's from why apps and shit. They not trying to cater to no bay niggas. Correct. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just rent it. Game. That yeah. every the everyday average person who yeah. doesn't have Spotify, who don't have Apple Music. That's who we playing music for. Yeah. I won't. I won't say who because I know you're gonna get on me about it. But um, I just had a conversation with somebody else, and he told me why Sexy Red is like that girl right now, like how she skipped everybody and went straight to that girl, even though she's pregnant, she's performing. Like shout out to Sexy Red, mm -hmm. whatever. But um, it's because he said, you know, Sexy Red is the one making the millions, but the at what she's saying is what the average woman mm -hmm. in the hood like. Mm -hmm. That's what she's thinking. So she's the most relatable of all of them because mm -hmm. she's speaking directly to them. I like, think it's deeper than that. I think they program these bitches. No, I don't think so. It's you can't program that. what's already. I mean, I, it, the program right. was was long time coming, mm -hmm. right? So that we're skip. We're way past programming. We already know about the program, right? Mm -hmm. But like she's saying what they are doing every Damn. single day ratchet shit it is a bad batch of bitches out right now it's not a bad it's always been that batch the freak nicks and the it's that's always been there yeah, it's that's just their mamas and shit no yeah it's yeah. the mamas the grandmamas the it just yeah. wasn't seen it wasn't exactly. in your face you couldn't yeah. scroll and see all of it yeah, at once yeah, yeah. it was always this yeah the sexy red thing is no different than this didn't trump playbook you find a group of people who are who have been disenfranchised or not included in whatever industry it is. Fashion, all that, yeah. And you super serve them. That's all Trump did, that's what Sexy Red does. Like she has a uniform. Uh -huh. Sexy Red has a yeah, uniform. Yeah, yeah, Sexy Red wasn't out for a full year before they were wearing her costume yeah. to Halloween. That's yeah. a whole that's a whole monumental moment when you become a costume. Ice Spice too. Yeah. She became a costume in less than no time. Yeah. So that's how you, that's what he say, you isolate the group that's been removed because that that's not what she usually is what's the when word when you look at when you look at something like a what's disenfranchised no well, that's inclusive? not no inclusive too but that's not the group that's usually glorified glorified that's what i was looking for yeah so when you look at i stuff, was scared to guess because y'all know all the big ass <laughs> words i'm like let me sit this no, one out glorified. You when, got you, it. when you look at something like uh are you familiar with like our future tyler the creator yeah all of that stuff I'm, i know who they is our future wolf gang they were all the same thing mm -hmm. they weren't included in the industry like no, that yeah. so they create hbk yeah they wasn't like yeah come on they created their own movement yeah and then everybody had to get on what they was doing. Yeah. Counterculture is always gonna work. NWA drop That's the word. Oh. Yeah. NWA would drop would go against the system and drop fuck the police. Before that you had public enemy. Before like it's always gonna be a counterculture movement and then fuck oh. that thrives. Yeah. The answer to the answer to a clean cut <laughs> this is gonna sound crazy. I don't know if people don't fuck with this. Uh, but the answer to a clean cut I'm this and I'm that would be a sexy red or when Cardi B came out. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's the same thing. But it's the same target you take, market. You take, you take a group. For what do you mean by how, clean cut? I mean, I meant like included people. Okay. Like, like for instance, like there's more girls like sexy red than are like you. Okay. Exactly. Right. You're yeah. the anomaly, not her. Exactly. Right. So that being said, all you do is you take these group of people who mm -hmm. have been not included, gangbangers, people from different, I know people from Hunter's Point. Mm -hmm. I got niggas from Hunter's Point, right? Mm -hmm. They weren't included economically. Mm -hmm. Niggas from your hood. Exactly. They weren't included economically. They weren't They weren't given money to buy houses. They weren't given the loans to, to own property. They weren't, so they, so then y'all banded together and created your own economy. Mm. It's the same thing. Mm. I get exactly what you're saying. Wow, and I yeah. got some shit coming up. I'm scared to even talk about it. You was there, though. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. But I see what you're saying. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, because... That's all Trump did. Yeah. He took all the poor it's white history. people. history. History repeats. He took all the poor white people and just, like, empower them. Yeah. Sexy Red take all of the girls like her and empower them. Mm. Wow. It's just and so it's simple, It's more motherfuckers out there like that, that than what we know because it's not... Being there's important. way more Sexy Reds than there are... Than Beyonce's. My, my young Miami. Yeah. 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 Miami getting... Miami on a jet. She with this. She doing that. She got TV shows. Yeah. But that's what made them pop, though, because they were in that Correct. bracket, but then they got pulled up so now they're like, wait, now nah, we need the girl that's we on our level. We need somebody to really. So boom. 
Ooh. And then if when Sexy Red marries the biggest of the bosses of the baddest, then oh, we need a new one. We need a ratchet. When like you, it has to be. It's like a whatever you you call it what it is. It's no man, disrespect. I'm gonna say this is my motherfucking platform. I don't give a fuck no more. My comedy special coming out, and I'm excited about Yee. it. Nigga. There you go. It is what it is. Because yeah, it's one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not saying them. what you was there. It's one of them. Yeah, Let me ask you a question. Yeah, when you go on stage, mm -hmm. have you ever talked about having money? That really ain't my thing. I have you ever look talked too good? Okay. Have you ever talked about not having money? You was looking yeah. like money what's, though. What's you more was relatable? Stupid. <laughs> what's more relatable? What gets the best engagement? What was your question again? Having money or not having money <laughs> on bad. stage? What oh, gets the not best? having money is more relatable from where I come yeah. from. And who you're speaking to. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He was looking like money, don't you? Yeah. Care. No, but I, it's a... It's a I'm it's not a, talking about that. I'm not fucking... I know exactly no, what you're talking know. about. I the, know the what you're talking about, too. Yeah. is... Oh yeah, I fuck with what he talking about. No, yeah. Or you ever got that one that one family member? I do have a family member. That yeah. Is. And then that's what makes the jokes hit harder because I instantly connect to what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. No, I know exactly what you're saying. But he was looking like money though. I just had yeah. to throw that out yeah, there. Yeah. It's a it's a trick to it. I can't. These niggas be watching me, man. You no. understand me? I can't give them the whole sauce. Your but yeah, I appreciate it. But yeah, it's for sure that. Yeah. It's for sure that. It's for sure yeah. that. Yeah. Because yeah. what he was saying, yeah. it was like all of us knew exactly what he meant. Like, it was like, blah. Like, saying things that's relatable, raw and uncut, and not doing what's normal right now. I had to go back and do my history. Yeah. Bill Cosby was popping. But, nigga, everybody trying to act like Bill Cosby because it was working. Richard Pryor only popped because he was the nigga that was not giving a fuck at the time. Mm -hmm. So, I know what you're talking about. So for every Kevin Hart, all of this you shit. get a Cat Williams. Exactly. Hmm. You need that. Yeah, and the ones that do do that, they OGs. They older. You need that. I see what you're saying. I think everything you just said made it more real that it's a simulation. Damn. It Even is a simulation. more like oh, it. Oh, we is. for sure in a simulation. For sure. I'll be looking at so I go on I, when I look at Instagram, TikTok and shit some days, I'll be like, Yep, it's any day now for a guy hit the reset button on this. Mm. It's over. I'll be watching. You see it's a trend. It's just so much craziness and clown shit going on. Like, bro, God gonna hit the reset button on everything. And then everybody trying to keep up with that, and that's why the quality of things is going down. And you gotta go back to the art of whatever it is, music, comedy. Go back to the art of it. I'm gonna tell you this, and I ain't never said this publicly, so this uh -huh. is exclusive for you. I'll sell everything I own and move to a, a Caribbean island and open a fishing business before. I started clowning and, and selling myself out on online for oh. some money. Amen. Amen. It take one to know one. Amen. I like this nigga, man. Popcorn. <laughs> I'm just not willing to coon for the camera. I'm not willing to fight, beat fake beef with niggas. I'm yeah. not finna sit down and talk to you about your viral TikTok record of you killing the homies and just, what are we doing? Comedy special coming out soon, man. Lewis Belt, uh, the title is called Raised by OGs, not IG. Um, Y'all check it out. Um, I don't know when this episode going to come out, but yeah, if it's out by now, go check that comedy <laughs> special out. If it ain't out, nigga, be prepared to watch it. <laughs> Lewis Belt, Raised by OGs, not IG. If you enjoyed this conversation, you're going to love the comedy special. That's what I got to promote before we wrap up this interview. Anything you want to say before you get up out of here? Oh, man, God is good. So is the West Coast. Mm. Anything you want to say before no, we get I'm about in, it? I'm in love, but you do you, you know. I'm good. Player I'm, shit. I'm just enjoying me. Hey, man, it's an honor. I appreciate you sliding through, giving knowledge that you can't get in college. <laughs> you, this motherfucker. Mean. It's the Cali kickback, so it's only right for the West Coast legend to come through and kick this knowledge, man. Yeah. Feel me? So, my name Louis Bell. We finna get up out of here. I hope you niggas wrote something down on this motherfucking episode, man, because niggas was popping it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. So, I'll see y'all again, man. It's your boy Louis Bell. See y'all next time.